Welcome to this using scientific notation video. Now, when you're talking about scientific notation, you've got to really know how you're writing these numbers. And the key, if you think about scientific notation, we've got a number times 10 to some power. Right? We're dealing with uh, powers of 10. But there is a very special piece about this first number. It has to be between 1 and 10. So when you think about decimals, you could have like 7.34 or 8.1, or 1.23456. The big thing is that there's only one number in front of the decimal point when you are writing numbers in scientific notation. Then all of these might have, you know, some times 10 to a power attached to it. That's not really an issue right now. It's just important that that number in front must be between 1 and 10. So we're going to jump right in to using this. So we're given some numbers here. Number one, we've got 19,300,000, and we want to write this in scientific notation. Now, remember, you want a number that is between 1 and 10. So when you're looking at this, you want to think, okay, I want to take a decimal point, and I want to shove it so that I have a number between 1 and 10. Now, recall, when you're looking at a number, if you do not see a decimal point, it starts at the end. So right now we've got a decimal point after that last zero. And I want to move that decimal to be between the 1 and the 9. Because then I can have 1.93, a number between 1 and 10. And you're, excuse me, you're always going to use non-zero numbers. So anything that's not a zero must be included in this business. Now, times 10 to the how do I find my exponent? Well, it's really a simple uh, counting problem now. So I go where I, my decimal point started there in that red dot. How many spots did I have to move it to get it to that red line? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I moved it 7 places, so my scientific notation answer is 1.93 times 10 to the 7th. Number 2. 324 million is the approximate population of the U.S. Now, Hopefully, when you see million, your brain screams, six, six. So I know that this is 324 times 10 to the sixth, because million means six places. Well, this is not scientific notation, because you will notice 324 is bigger than 10. So I want to take my decimal, and I want to put it between the three and the two to make this 3.24. There you go. Well, I moved this two places. And because 324, we call that a big number. A big number is anything larger than 10. So we are going to add 2 because I moved it two places. Move it two places, add 2, and I end up with times 10 to the 8th. So if you have a big number bigger than 10, your exponent goes up. If we have a small number, which we'll get to later, and you have to move the decimal, it's going to go down because small means negative. Big is positive. Okay. Uh, on that last problem, you also could have written out 324 million if you wanted to do that first, then move the decimal 3.24 and counted 3, 6, 7, 8. You could do that also. Sorry, I want to throw that in there. More than one way to do these problems. Well, some of them. And number three, the population of Indianapolis is 848,800. My decimal point starts here. I want to move it just after that first 8 so that I have 8.488. Now, how many spots did I move it? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Boom. It's a positive exponent because 848,000 is a large number, right? Bigger than 10. Number four, 7.3 billion. Well, 7.3, my brain is screaming nine because you have billion. Billion means nine. And when I write it like that, 7.3 times 10 to the ninth because billion is nine, you will see that this number is already between one and 10. So that's my answer. Right, the world population is a, a pretty easy one to deal with there. Number five, 92.96 million is the distance from the Earth to the sun in miles. Well, million means six, so that's 92.96 times 10 to the sixth. And you're saying, hey, yo, that's wrong. You're right, it is, because 92 is bigger than 10. So I'm going to move it one place, and because it's large, I'm going to add that one place I moved to my exponent. So 9.296 times 10 to the seventh. All right, so that's going from standard to scientific. Now let's go the other way. I've got 6.789 times 10 to the fifth. 
This exponent of 5 is going to tell us how many places to move the decimal point. And because 5 is positive, that means our number is going to get bigger. So I'm going to take my number of 6.789, and I'm going to move it 5 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Any idea what I'm going to put in those empty humps? You're right. Zeros. So my answer will be 678,900. There you go. In number 7, we've got an exponent of 3. It's positive. My number's going to get bigger. And it's going to get bigger 3 places. So 1, 2, 3. 3,456.78 is my standard number. And it's okay. You're allowed to have decimals in your answer, right? Totally okay. Just got to move the decimal. All right, let's do some multiplication and division. Now the product rule. I'm just going to make a problem up here. If I have um, 3 times 10 to the 3rd, um, and we're multiplying that by 2 times 10 to the 8th. Okay, so the key is you multiply the numbers by themselves. 3 times 2 is 6. Good work. Then we take the 10 piece. So we're going to have times 10 to the 3 plus 8 is 11. That's an exponential rule. When you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. So we're going to multiply the numbers and then multiply your uh, your tens by adding the exponents. You will want to double check that your final answer is in scientific notation, and if it is, you're done. If it's not, you're going to have to play with it a little bit. Now the quotient rule. If I take 8 times 10 to the tenth, and I divide that by 4 times 10 to the third, you start by dividing the numbers. 8 divided by 4 is 2 times now think about it. When we multiplied, we added our exponents. So when we're dividing, we're going to subtract our exponents. The number on top you start with 10 minus 3 is 7. And so my final answer would be 2 times 10 to the 7th. All right, so that's what we're going to play with uh, the rest of the time here. So I'm going to start by multiplying 2.7 times 10 to the 4th by 3.2 times 10 to the 5th. Okay, so when I multiply these, I multiply the numbers. 2.7 times 3.2 is 8.64, 4 plus 9 minus 5 is 4. Okay, my thing was paused. How long has it been paused? I don't even know. Um, so just run back real quick. This problem, uh, the black one is significant figures because this was 2 and this one was 2. We end up with 2. When we divide, I do recommend whatever comes first goes on top. And I recommend writing it out. That way you can see clearly 8.4 divided by 2.1 gives me 4. 9 minus 5 gives me 4. And there's my final answer. Okay. Now, if you're talking about significant figures, this has 2 and this has 2. So you might have to make that 4.0 times 10 to the 4th to get that with two significant figures. All right, let's go to number 10. Or another number 9. I don't know. I can't do this very well. Okay, so we're multiplying. So I'm going to take 3.8 times 5.7 and I get 21.66 uh, 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 5th gives me times 10 to the 13th. Now hopefully you're screaming, hey, that's wrong because you're right. Right? 21.66, we need to move it over 1. 21 is bigger than 10 so that means my exponent will go up by the number of places I move it. I move it one place, exponent goes up by one. So 2.166 times 10 to the 14th. Now, if you're talking significant figures, 3.8 has 2, 5.7 has 2, so I want this to have 2. I look at 6, 6 rounds up, and I'm going to end up with 2.2 times 10 to the 14th. Moving on to number 10, we're going to multiply again. But notice how three significant figures, three significant figures. So when I end, I'm going to want three significant figures in my answer. But when I multiply those two together, I'm going to end up with 16.9. That's three significant figures. I'm just going to stop there. And then I do ten, uh, 7 plus 3 gives me times 10 to the 10th. 16 is bigger than 10. So if I move this one place, I'm going to add a decimal. And I end up with 1.69 times 10 to the 11th. And moving on to number 11. Now we're going to do a little division. And these problems are a little bit trickier. But we're going to start by what comes first goes on top. And then we're going to divide. So I'm going to take 2.3 divided by 7.9. And I want two significant digits. So 0.29 times 10 to the 
7 minus 3 is 4. Now, hopefully when you look at this, you say, um, 0.29 is not between 1 and 10, and I would say that's correct. So you need to get this. Now, 0.2 is less than 1. We call this a small number. If it's a small number, your exponent's going to go down. So when I move this one place, my exponent's going to go down 1 because we had a small number. So 2.9 times 10 to the third will be my final answer um, because we had small number makes your decimal go down or your exponent go down number 12 is going to be similar so I've got 4.31 times 10 to the 11th over 6.21 times 10 to the fourth and I'm a huge fan of writing everything out first because it just helps me visualize what I'm doing so I divide these and again I want three significant figures because each of them has three so I have 0.694 11 minus 4 is 7 0.6 is less than one small number, so I'm going to move it one place, and because it's small, that means my exponent's going to go down. So 6.94 times 10 to the sixth. And that, my friends, is playing with scientific notation.